Okay, so I want to speak about the issue of women's rights, feminism, China, and Hillary Clinton, all kind of combined together. Um, I want to speak about those issues, and there's a, a secondary issue I want to cover afterwards. I'll just bring it into the same video because it's related. Um, but to the main point, which is comments that Hillary Clinton made yesterday criticizing Xi Jinping, the president of China. Um, he was speaking in the UN, and uh, actually, I thought it was his wife that had addressed this issue, but uh, apparently, she had spoken himself. Anyway, Hillary Clinton has laid into him for, in her view, being a hypocrite because he was speaking about women's rights whilst China um, detains feminist groups. Um, my response to this was to think that it's uh, interesting. Why? Because um, number one, China is very, very, very far from being the worst country in the world for women. Um, is Does that mean that there's no issues? Of course not. There is issues. And I, I want to reflect on some of my observations um, based on the developments that China's made and um, what issues still arguably exist. Um, firstly, I have to address this thing. It's my understanding that what she was referring to was the fact that there has been some feminist groups that have been uh, detained in China for organizing protests about numerous women's issues. Um, I've no doubt that that is the case, uh, and it's wrong. But what Hillary Clinton doesn't seem to be taking on board is the fact that protests in general is not permitted in China of any issue. Um, it's an authoritarian state, and public protests are not generally permitted, unless that is, uh, you know, the nationalistic or something. But generally speaking, it's free assembly is not permitted in China. So, you know, it, yes, that includes this feminist group or feminist groups. I think it's referring actually to there's a group of five women who um, have got quite a lot of attention recently because of their activities. But the point is that it is not targeting that specific ideology or that specific group because it targets everyone. And plenty of Chinese men have been detained for being involved in illegal protests or gathering publicly. So I think that it's um, that that's one thing to take on board. Secondly, and I think this is a very important point, I'll come to women's rights in China in a minute, but it seems strange that she's laying into Xi Jinping and China, but is saying nothing, at least not at the moment, about Saudi Arabia. Now, I, I don't know Hillary Clinton's track record in this. I don't know if she has criticized the Saudis. Maybe she has, to be fair, but certainly not in as vocal a way as this. And which country do you think is better for women, China or Saudi Arabia? I think the answer is pretty obvious. China is infinitely better. Um, and it makes me wonder, well, is this, is this connected with um, Washington's close ties to Riyadh? Now, Hillary Clinton is incredibly ambitious. She obviously wants to be president. Um, so that makes me think she's just going to continue the status quo of continuing relations, super close relations with Saudi Arabia. Therefore, she doesn't want to offend or confront an ally. Um, but that's hypocritical because Saudi Arabia is absolutely one of the worst countries in the world for women. It's one of the worst countries generally. Um, I mean, I have to add this. It's not connected to the main theme. But Saudi Arabia is going to crucify a young man this week for taking part in the demonstration. It's a brutal, brutal, brutal um, example of a human rights abuser. So if she's going to criticize China, I think she should at least be consistent and criticize other countries with very bad records on women's rights um, that are much worse than China. Um, and at this point, it's appropriate to look at China a little bit and um, women's rights. Um, there's no question about it that traditionally there was a big, big issue with this. Um, Western countries, especially China, had a reputation for being backward regarding, for example, foot binding. But foot binding was abolished about 70 years ago. Um, and it's one of the few good things the communists done. They were very much against that sort of system. 
Um, a lot of the attitudes in China that can be described as patriarchal, I don't think you can really blame the government for that. And believe me, this is coming from someone who hates communism. But I will be fair, and I don't think that this particular issue you can blame on the Communist Party. In fact, as Mao said, women hold up half the sky. The Communist Party has probably done a lot more than the Nationalists did, and they done a hell of a lot more than the various dynasties did in regards to giving women opportunities. Um, I mean, in the 60s, women and men were indistinguishable in China, not only in terms of how they dress, but in terms of opportunities. Um, they were given exactly the same opportunities. Um, and there's several powerful women within the Communist Party today, not just Peng Li Yuan, she's a major general in the Chinese, in the People's Liberation Army, but um, I believe the foreign minister is a woman, or certainly the government spokeswoman, who's one of the most prominent faces of the Chinese Communist Party today. I forget her name, but um, I think her family name is Wang. Uh, apologies, I forget her exact name, but um, certainly I would say she's the most visible person in the Communist Party outside China apart from Xi himself. So I do think that China, I don't think you can accuse China of not giving women the same opportunity in a comparable way to, um, for example, Saudi Arabia. It's just ridiculous. Um, is it the sort of Western feminist situation that people like Hillary Clinton want? No. Because, for example, in China, um, there's still a huge market for um, a lot of issues that feminists would have contention with, issues like uh, beauty, for instance. Um, I mean, in the West, there's this thing as backlash against so-called objectification, which I've argued is being taken all out of proportion. Um, if Western feminists believe that they're going to sort of enforce their brand of feminism into a country like China, it's never going to happen. Now, I have, you know, I taken often away from Chinese women's rights activists because there are, I'm not saying that there's no issues at all, there are issues. But that should be done by including men, by bringing men on board, not by this sort of divisive um, Western style feminism, which won't help anyone. Um, and my point is that for all its faults, I don't think you can accuse the Communist Party of being the worst offender when it comes to women's rights. Does that mean it's got a squeaky clean track record? Certainly not. Certainly not. Um, I mean, by the 80s, uh, in the 80s, there was a situation whereby baby girls were being discarded. That was horrible. But that was the China of the 80s. It's a very different situation today. It could be argued that young Chinese girls and women are spoiled. Um, so were you young, you know, the one product actually of the one child policy has been so-called little emperors and little princesses. This is something that has been quite obvious. I'm not trying to offend anyone by that, by the way, but I think many Chinese people agree with me in that regard. Um, but in terms of women's rights, I will actually defend China on this occasion. I really, really don't think you could say it's worse than any other. Um, and there's plenty of pressure on young Chinese men, for example, be financially strong and there's a male surplus so there's a lot of issues facing men as well um domestic violence is a big big issue um and there's lots of videos for example online showing women getting horribly beaten up and uh the police not doing a great deal about it that's obviously a huge problem so i've got no problem with activists raising awareness of those sort of issues but i i don't think you do it by western style feminism um, because that has been very counterproductive in the West, and it's one of the things that we should not be exporting, in my opinion. Um, human rights generally is a big issue in China, but to specify it to just one issue and then try to accuse China of being worse than anyone else, I think is disingenuous, because these, uh, the rest of the feminists in China is just part of a wider situation whereby protests in general are banned. Um, I mean, if a group of men, for example, in fact, there were a group of young male students who were arrested for trampling on a Chairman Mao portrait. Okay, so why does Hillary Clinton not say, you know, um, why does she not criticise the 
um, attack on protests in general. Um, so that's just a few of my observations. Just to be clear, I'm not saying China is perfect. I'm not saying that for a second. And I'm sure you can find plenty of examples of women having their human rights abused in China. But you can also find examples of men having their human rights abused. And if we're looking on an international scale, China isn't, I, I wouldn't say it's even close to the top when it comes to women's human rights being abused. A country like the DRC, where women have been used as weapons of war, a country like Pakistan, where women have acid thrown in the face, you can't compare China to that. You really can't. In terms of patriarchy, which again is a contentious issue, but arguably Japan is a much more patriarchal society. Um, I asked a Chinese friend, uh, did he think that China would ever have a woman president? His opinion was it probably wouldn't. But, you know, things do happen. South Korea has a woman leader. And South Korea, just like Japan and China, can be seen as a patriarchal country. So, you know, this isn't quite black and white. That's the main issue I want to talk about. Well, I have spoken about. Um, I just don't really see why she's focusing on that issue. If it's to try and appear strong, you know, coming up to the presidential, maybe, maybe all it is is politics. You know, we're coming up to the democratic debate. Maybe it's just Hillary's way of um, showing that she's, she's a strong leader. Now, about Hillary Clinton's presidential run, I will make a quick word about that. I haven't followed it very closely. I know the Republicans are really laying into her with this email situation and also with Ben Hazy, they're obsessed by that. Um, on, on this occasion, I'll defend Hillary, not necessarily her handling of Ben Hazy, but the fact that in the Bush administration, there was something like 20 attacks on American embassies. So why are the Republicans so obsessed about, yes, it was a dreadful situation, what happened to those diplomats, but I just think it's hypocritical for the Republicans to attack Hillary on this. Um, and for them to obsess over one issue seems, sounds a little bit desperate to me. That's just my outside reading of the situation. I know some of her strategists have said she should play the feminism card in her presidential campaign. Um, if I were Hillary Clinton, I wouldn't. I would be smart. Why? Because all she'll do is polarise male voters. Um, you know, it's a bit like in the past, whenever black candidates have ran, if they've sort of ran on a, um, a platform of being a black candidate, it's backfired. Um, one of the smart things Obama done was he did reach out to people. So Hillary, likewise, if she's too aggressively feminist, all it's going to do is put off male voters. Um, so she has to be smart. I think she's a very capable politician. I think she can be a strong president. I, I won't say much more because I don't know her policies inside out. Um, would I vote for her? I'm not so sure about that um, because of my views on feminism. Really. You know, I certainly have questions about uh, Hillary's position on that. I have heard people say she's a hardline feminist. Um, I've seen her give mixed messages in that regard. And sometimes I've seen her like this occasion, tune into the feminist record. Other times she's been a bit more neutral, I think, in the views. Um, anyway. That's the uh, main thing. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this head off with, uh, with Bernie Sanders. Uh, I have been following some of the Republican debates. A lot of it to me is predictable, like who can be the most conservative, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But that's for another video. Um, okay, so the second feminism related issue I want to talk about is the French actress Marianne Cotillard. Uh, I think she was in the film The Artist. Um, I'm reading this actually from the pro-feminist website Jezebel. Um, and I also saw it in the I newspaper earlier on. While promoting her new role as Lady Macbeth, Oscar-winning French actress Marianne Cotillard gave an interview where she said some fascinating stuff. According to Metro UK, Cotillard, Cotillard made her comments to Net, a portrait's publication magazine, which she is on the winter 2015 cover of. Film making is not about gender, Marianne says. You cannot ask a president in a film festival like Cannes to have like five movies directed by women and five by men. For me, it doesn't create equality. It creates separation. I mean, I don't qualify myself as a feminist. We need to fight for women's rights. I don't want to separate women from men. She adds, we're separated already, but we're not made the same, and it's a difference that creates energy and creation and love. 
sometimes in the word feminism there's too much separation you know i want to applaud this lady i really do because i always find it refreshing when i'm leading women speak out against feminism or at least um distance himself from it i find it very refreshing because here we have a talented successful woman who is choosing not to endorse the movement and of course predictably the sisterhood is attacking her and uh you know of course that which i've argued before is a bit of a contradiction when they say they're all about women's choices and then when any, ever any woman and it's not the first time this has happened there's been other actresses and other uh female public figures who have not described themselves as feminists a feminist have absolutely seen red over that if feminism is really about women's choices then if you're a feminist you'll respect her decision not to tag herself with that word she said she believes in women's rights you know um as do i but i, I think it's very refreshing and i have a lot of respect for her for saying that because she will face criticism um from feminists who will patronize her they'll say she doesn't understand it etc etc but what she's saying to me is spot on feminism is a divisive movement so it's great you know um and i don't think anyone would say that she's a pushover she's a successful woman um feminists hate when successful women speak out against them because it doesn't fit into their agenda so personally i find that very refreshing um so i'll leave it there that means